Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, welcome to the uh, 10th lecture of the uh, course experimental nuclear physics in the last lecture uh, we were studying the particle accelerator this lecture is the continuation of our previous lecture and in this lecture we shall study the energy gain in different kind of accelerator in linear accelerator in cyclotron and i will also explain that how cyclotron was uh, uh, limited and synchrotron was introduced uh, for the particle acceleration okay so let's start with the linear accelerator so as we know that in a linear accelerator the particle is accelerated in the linear fashion here it is important to mention that as the particle enters from the drift tube to the next drift tube the particle will get accelerate because of the oscillating electric field applied here as the particle get entered from the first drift tube to the next drift tube the next drift tube will attract the coming charge particle and the first drift tube will repel the moving charge particle so in this way the charge particle will accelerate after each gap so as the particle get accelerate after each gap and the particle will cover more distance as the frequency of the oscillating field is constant so after each successive acceleration in a drift tube the particle speed will be higher and it will cover more distance with the same frequency change so we need to change the length of the drift tube after each drift tube you can see here the length of the first tube drift tube is small and the length of the second drift tube is large because the particle will get more acceleration and the length of the third drift tube is more large due to the large acceleration of the particle and so on the length of the tube will be uh, increased it is the uh, major disadvantage advantage of the linear accelerator because to accelerate the charge particle up to several hundred mega electron volt we need a longer and longer linear accelerator in the world there are accelerator up to 3 to 4 to 5 uh, kilometers of the range to accelerate the particles so uh, some more things and some more important factor needs to mention here that the charge particles are injected in the first tube at the moment when its polarity is opposite to that of the uh, particle the frequency of an oscillating uh, field is adjusted so that the polarity of the drift tube get reverts at the moment when the particle reaches the gap between the drift tube so there are uh, two more type of focusing are required which is radial focusing and phase focusing the radial focusing of the charged particle is towards the movement of the common uh, axis of the charged particle into the drift tube while it's crossing the gap between the two tube so we need a radial focusing the radial focusing is required because the charged particles may divert from straight path when it reaches the gap due to the curved electric field line so radial focusing is required here another focusing phase focusing is required here the that is the process of making all the charged particle to reach the successive gaps with a constant phase difference between them which is called the phase focusing so the phase focusing is required because phase difference between the particles may change in gap due to the different energies gained by the uh, particles uh, another <clears throat> factor which is faraday caging which is uh, provided by the drift tube and drift tube will be act as faraday cage when particle bunches passes through the tube the frequency of the driving signal and the spacing of the gaps between the drift tube is so designed that the maximum voltage different appears as the particle crosses the gaps uh, between the drift tube so this accelerate the particle and in increase its energy and velocity so uh, let's discuss how the length of the drift tube varies with the speed you we know that a simple relation s is equal to vt where the distance is the uh, product of uh, uh, velocity and time 
you can see here the distance in the form of the length of the tube and Vn is the velocity and T by is T by 2 is the time taken to uh, complete distance in a single tube because we are uh, we are using the oscillating electric field so after each half cycle the polarity is reversed so half cycle is spent within a single tube so n is representing here the number of tube so in the first tube the length will be l1 and the speed will be v1 and in the next tube l2 and the velocity will be v2 and so on the velocity of the particle will be increased to the length of the uh, tube uh, but the frequency of the oscillating electric field was constant so t by 2 will remain constant as the time to complete the half cycle okay so the kinetic energy of the charged particle moving in the linear accelerator can be given as 1 by 2 m v n square. Uh, this relation is generalized relation for any tube because we are using v n square. So energy picked up by ion after passing through the tube is q v naught because as a particle will a particle will be accelerated due to the electrostatic potential difference which is given by a uh, qv naught uh, that, that will be provided in the gap so the energy for the n number of charged particle will be n q v naught so in this case you can see here n e v naught is the uh, energy gain by the charged particle due to the oscillating electric field and k is the energy that was given to the particle at the time of the injection. So K plus N E V naught could be the total kinetic energy of the particle. So these two kinetic energies can be correlated. So by comparing the equation 2 and 3, we will get this equation. And from here, we can get the value of V and uh, velocity of the particle in the N tube. As V naught is the peak value of the applied potential, and K is the kinetic energy of the particle at the time of its injection into the accelerator. So you can see the relation V n is proportional to the n number of the uh, tube and V naught is the applied potential and K was the starting potential m is the mass of the particle. So by using the equation 4 in equation 1 you can, you can see that V1 was used here to calculate the value of length of the tube. You, so you can see here the length of the tube so this t was replaced with the frequency by using the t is equal to 1 over f relation so by using the 1 over f this relation uh, was derived and this relation shows that the frequency of is uh, frequency of the applied uh, oscillating field is inversely proportional to the length of the tube so this relation Shows al that also shows that the length of the drip tube increase with the increase in the number of the tube as we, as charged particle moves to uh, end of the next drip tube then and then to the end of the next tube next drip tube it will be accelerated and the length of the tube will be increased after the higher value of the end the length of the drip tube will be much higher. So the particle can be accelerated to high energy by using the uh, standing wave. It means waveguide is used to accelerate the particle in the uh, linear accelerator. The particle must pass the gap at the instant when the uh, phase of the AC cycle is increasing. It provides good uh, phase stability. So it is, uh, it is uh, uh, proof from here that length of the drift tube will be increased after the uh, acceleration of the particle and when the particle will accelerate to several hundred mega electron volt we shall have the uh, length in kilometers so uh, there are accelerator in um, the range of kilometers in the world to accelerate the particle up to hundreds of mega electron volt so it is a major uh, disadvantage that uh, the length uh, is the major constraint or uh, major disadvantage of the linear accelerator. So uh, uh, here we can discuss the advantages and disadvantages comparatively. So the advantages are that 
we can accelerate the particle up to uh, very high speed and uh, we can study the nuclear structure and nuclear reaction uh, we can study the fast electron scattering and the uh, linear accelerators are also used in the treatment of cancer uh, using the therapies because uh, uh, linear accelerator produce the high energy gamma rays uh, for the treatment of cancer there are uh, certain disadvantages as i have mentioned earlier that length is the major advantage major disadvantage sorry the uh, device length limit the location where one may be placed so uh, to accelerate the charge particle to higher values we use a larger directory to install the linear accelerator the second disadvantage is that a great number of driver devices associated to power supplies uh, are required to increase that is in that increase the construction and maintenance expenses of the linear accelerator and the third disadvantage is associated uh, with the accelerating uh, cavities walls of the accelerating cavities because those are made of conducting materials and the accelerating fields are large as the length of the tube is large the wall resistivity convert electrical energy into heat quickly so uh, a major portion of the energy is wasted in the form of heat okay so the next discussion is about the cyclotron as uh, we have seen in the previous lecture that in cyclotron the particle is accelerated due to the electric and magnetic field so i will start the discussion with the concept of the magnetic force that as a uh, moving charge particle enters into the magnetic field it will give a circular motion you can see here this force can be find out by the right hand here you can see that the direction of the magnetic field is from north to south pole and direction of uh, the north to south pole is given by the direction of the uh, magnetic field here given by this blue arrow with p and velocity of the particle is v here the particle was entered in the direction of the thumb and the direction of the finger is showing the magnetic field and as the particle will get enter in this direction the particle will bend uh, and show a circular motion and the force by the magnetic force will be given the particle to move in a circular fashion so the magnetic force will provide the centripetal force and the particle will bend up so the uh, the magnetic force will be right angle to the magnetic field and the velocity so by using the relation f is equal to q v cross p here the cross product of velocity and magnetic field will give the magnetic force you can see in the next slide that if uh, we have the ion source in a magnetic field then the particle will move in a circular fashion due to the necessary centripetal force that is provided by the magnetic force as the velocity of the particle will remain uh, tangential Uh, but the centripetal force will keep the particle moving in a circular fashion so this is uh, the uh, magnetic effect on the moving charged particle but what if we add an electrostatic effect so electrostatic effect will accelerate the charged particle so uh, see here to provide the electrostatic effect we have applied the two d's d1 and d2 here the red plate is positive and the a uh, blue plate is negative and the uh, uh, field will be oscillating time to time and uh, this gap is provided between the uh, plates to accelerate the charged particle because this gap will provide the electrostatic field to uh, for, for the necessary acceleration let's see what's happen as the magnetic force has been applied to, uh, perpendicular to the electric force so as a whole a magnetic force will affect the charged particle to move in a circular fashion and the electric force will accelerate the charged particle between the d's so between the d's if we see that the charged particle is, is entered from the center of the uh, cyclotron and the charged particle will be accelerating between the gaps as the particle moves between the gaps 
its acceleration will be higher and after each successive gap uh, between the d's the particle will more accelerate and the radius of the particle will be higher and higher so if the ma applied magnetic field and the applied frequency will remain constant the acceleration of the particle will increase and also the radius of the particle will also increase let's see in this diagram this the ion source was uh, injecting the charged particle here and the charged particle was accelerating and with the acceleration of the charged particle the radius of the charged particle was also increasing and as the high frequency input is constant and the applied magnetic field is constant so the only uh, factor which will increase with the speed of the uh, particle is the radius of the particle so let's see in this animation let the ion source was uh, injected within the field and the particle will accelerate it and the radius was going on increasing uh, what is happening here the charged particle uh, let's see a positive charged particle was injected and the positive plate will repel this positive charged particle to attract toward the negative plate and the charged particle will accelerate because of the repulsion by the positive plate and because of the attraction by the negative plate and when the charged particle uh, move in the next plate sorry when the charged particle we were here when the charged particle will move in the next uh, d uh, the polarity will be reversed and now this plate is positive when the charged particle reach to the end of the next plate the polarity will be reversed and now the positive charged particle will get repulsive force from this d an attractive force from this d and in this way the charged particle will accelerate further and the radius will be increased further so in the next uh, in the next uh, cycle it will be further accelerated due to the same difference and as the particle go on increasing with the speed the radius will also be increasing so the role of magnetic force is here the only uh, that the particle is moving in a circular fashion and the role of the electric field oscillating electric field is here that it is that is accelerating the charged particle so if we uh, see here inside the d the path of the ion is circular and the force toward the uh, center is given by the magnetic force f is equal to q v cross b so this charged particle is getting necessary centripetal force due to the magnetic force so as uh, this necessary centripetal force is given by the magnetic force so if we can relate uh, f is equal to q v cross b is uh, uh, from m v square divided by r so by equating these two equation we can get the value of the velocity as the length of the total circumference is 2 pi r and the length covered in uh, half d is pi r so <clears throat> the time in 1 d is uh, t by 2 as the time of the complete cycle is t so the time of the half d the time spent by the charged particle in half d will be t by 2 okay so by uh, using the value of v from uh, this relation by using the value of v uh, by using the relation mv square divided by r v q v here we simplify for the value of v and this provides the velocity uh, velocity of the charged particle here you can see that the velocity of the charged particle is proportional with the magnetic field but the magnetic field is constant but charge is also constant mass is also constant so the radius is the factor which is proportional with the velocity so the radius will increase with the velocity of the particle on the other hand if we see that uh, as we know that uh, the omega is equal to 2 pi f you know that the relation omega is equal to 2 pi f where from we can find the time period t is equal to 2 pi over omega and if we replace uh, v is equal to r omega uh, by using the relation v is equal to r omega we can write omega is equal to v divided by r and if we replace omega 
with v divided by r in this equation and by, by using the value of v from here we will uh, be able to find the value of the time period or value of the frequency within the uh, within the t so here we can see that the time period is inversely proportional to the magnetic field on the other hand we can say that the frequency of the field is uh, directly proportional to the magnetic field it, it means that we have to synchronize the frequency with the uh, with the magnetic field now uh, if we discuss the limitation of the uh, cyclotron which is due to the uh, mass of the particle as uh, in classical cyclotron magnetic field is constant charge is constant and mass is also constant so majorly uh, the m is the factor which provides the limitation as the particle move with the relativistic speed the relativistic speed will uh, uh, will negate the principle of the cyclotron and after each successive phase change the particle will be deaccelerating so if we uh, watch the energy gain of the cyclotron that is given by 1 by 2 mv square v was taken from the previous equation and uh, used to derive the maximum kinetic energy in this equation if we use the value of v from the previous equation which was v which was v is equal to p q r divided by m by using uh, this value in the equation we will get this relationship as the kinetic energy is equal to q square p square r square divided by 2m so <clears throat> in the previous uh, slide you can see that the kinetic energy is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle if somehow the mass of the particle will change it will certainly affect the kinetic energy of the particle how it can be happened as we know that if the particle moves with the relativistic speed then the mass of the particle will be reduced uh, sorry, the mass of the particle will be increased. So, increase in mass will affect the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy will be reduced. So, increase in mass as a result of the relativistic effect will certainly affect the kinetic energy and it will limit the kinetic energy of the particle. So, limitation of the cyclotron can be explained with the equation that was derived earlier. Omega is equal to QB divided by M is the angular frequency that is given by the electric field of the cyclotron. And if this mass is replaced with the relativistic mass. Why we are replacing this with the relativistic mass? Because as the charge particle move with the higher speed and when it will reach to the relativistic speed or comparable to the speed of light, then the mass of the particle will be changed. This change of the uh, mass of the particle will affect this relationship. If this mass will be increased, it will affect the frequency. So, it means we can uh, we can uh, modulate this mass with the modulation of the frequency. So, we need a frequency modification in the cyclotron. Or, on the other hand, we can also uh, synchronize with the change of the magnetic field because the charge will remain constant. So the change in mass can be adjusted with the change of the uh, frequency or change of the magnetic field. So these two uh, adjustments uh, were introduces uh, the concept of the synchrocyclotron. Synchrocyclotron is a specialized cyclotron where the main principle is same as that of the cyclotron but in the cyclotron the frequency was kept constant but in synchro cyclotron we adjust the frequency we synchronize the frequency with the change of the relativistic mass here you can see that qb divided by m gamma is explaining the lorentz factor and this lorentz factor will affect the frequency so we can adjust the frequency by uh, the change of the mass so it means that the change of the frequency will uh, synchronize the change of the mass so there is another variation of the cyclotron which is, uh, which is uh, called the isochronous cyclotron and alternative to the synchrocyclotron is the isochronous cyclotron 
it has a magnetic field that increases with radius rather than with time isochronous cyclotrons are capable of producing much greater beam current than isochronous synchrocyclotron uh, but requires azimuthal variations in the field strength the variation in the magnetic field provides a strong focusing effect and keeps the particles captured in their uh, spiral trajectory so it's another case of the uh, synchrocyclotron it is another variation of the cyclotron so we have two variations synchrocyclotron and isochronous cyclotron so it's all about the uh, cyclotron so in this lecture we have covered the energy gain of the linear accelerator and energy gain in case of the cyclotron and different uh, factors affecting like the length in the case of linear accelerator and modification in the case of uh, cyclotron so in the next lecture we shall cover the synchrocyclotron thank you see you in the next lecture okay love face